Hello, my name is Kerry Boyd and I am the Fundraising and Marketing Manager for Autism NI. Over 20,000 people are affected by autism in Northern Ireland and over 300 children are being diagnosed every year. To date, um, it is the fastest growing disability in Europe and there is no known cause nor cure for autism, but what charities like Autism and I can do is provide interventions to support those families who have a child with autism. My name is Tracy and I have a son, James, who is 10 um, and he has high function autism. The main objective of coming to Shine is you're coming to get a break. The kids get a break. They, when you have a child with autism, you're almost, you bring them into environments with other children where you're trying to um, kind of squash their behavior so they don't look out of place. Whereas when we come here, all the children are autistic. So it doesn't matter if they run about screaming or they do something on tour because it's, it's normal in our area. So the group's very valuable and it's growing and our passion's growing for it. So the aim is just to keep getting funding um, keep getting the word out there that the, there's support there for the parents and they don't need to go the extreme lengths to go out of the community to look for it and the community will support them in what they need and that's what we're trying to do. Autism is a social and communication disability and it affects how a person interacts with the outside world and interacts with other people. It affects an, an individual in three separate ways through their social skills, their communication skills and their imagination skills. It varies in degrees from person to person, which is known as the autism spectrum. And it goes from classic autism, low functioning autism, right up to high functioning autism known as Asperger syndrome. It's one of the biggest concerns that Autism and I has at the minute, that there, there are some adult services for, for people with autism in Northern Ireland, but they're nowhere near enough. They're nowhere near adequate. Basically because diagnosis rates um, only really started in the 1990s. So all those children who were two or three then are now coming through to be in their 20s now. And there's not enough services for those people. Once they leave school, parents um, are at their wit's end. What, what is their child going to do? Where are they going to go? Because they need that support. Now there are other charities that do offer support for adults with autism. But yet again they need funded by the government and they need support. My name is Linda Harvey and I've been involved in SHINE from it was founded. It's probably about two years ago now. Um, how I got involved, I have a son who is Asperger's. Myself and a couple of parents decided we would have a parent support group. Um, it started off very, very small. There was only a few of us meeting. And now I think we have 58 parents. Um, with about 30 children. We've had parents just hearing about us through word of mouth. We got a lot of publicity material done, but we couldn't actually put it out because we don't have the room in our premises at the minute, um, which has just been given to us, which is great, but we don't have the room to grow. And there's definitely a need out there. We had a couple of parents arrive two weeks ago. The same thing, they were given the diagnosis and let go and they were told that somebody would be in touch and they were just devastated they just received news that their child had autism but they knew nothing about autism or where to go so it was vital that we were there to support those parents and the children. James was diagnosed when he was entering P1 um, by an education psychologist uh, it was picked up in nursery through just different signs in his behaviour which were becoming a bit concerning to do with his um, schooling and him settling in. People always ask you when you have a child with autism, does it get better or does it get easier? Um, it doesn't get better or easier, the goalposts shift and as they shift you learn to adapt. So when you're going from a child who is a toddler, who has um, difficulties communicating, tantrums and they can't verbalise what's wrong with them, then you learn to cope with that. Then they go into the school setting and then they're learning um, to speak, they're learning to write, they're learning maths, English, the, all different things. But as James gets older, his intelligence gets higher. And so his behavior changes in a way where it's more mentally challenging, more than physically. He's become very humorous um, because he's had to, obviously with his autism, he's had to learn social cues that other children find quite easy. So as he's getting older, he's getting better, he's developing his own personality, which is great. 
but the wealth of knowledge that he has brings a whole different aspect of challenges to the relationship. We don't receive funding from anybody. They're the centre that we use on the DEVOC, um, through, through them, they have raised funds for us and we've done our own fundraising nights. Um, last year we had a night in the Felons where we did, I mean the local community were brilliant in providing pri prizes for us and we did a night there and we raised a thousand pound but like a thousand pound would keep us going six months. The 2nd of April is Autism Awareness Day, World Autism Awareness Day, so it's throughout the world and as part of here our group decided to get together and set off blue balloons down at the City Hall um, just to raise awareness of autism. It's a spectrum and it's a big, big spectrum so there can be children who are non-verbal right up to children that are high achievers but they can all be on the spectrum. Um, because they have those social and communication issues. There's no cohesiveness, so at the minute um, you're given a diagnosis in one centre and you're discharged. So you're discharged from that centre because you've got a diagnosis. So then you're referred to another centre, um, which again involves a waiting list where you have an autism intervention therapist who is supposed to work with you. But there isn't enough of them out there. Very few of our parents in our group have had any contact whatsoever with the autism intervention therapist. And then you're sent to training. So for instance, my diagnosis, the ch my son's diagnosis was done in North Belfast. Our training was in East Belfast in Hollywood Arches. And then, you know, we live in West Belfast. So there's many, many parents come to us. I'm lucky, I drive, I have access to tra transport. Many parents don't. And to get a child with autism on public transport and get them to these places is really, really, really hard. The group got together through a meeting with Autism ANI because there was no real support in the community of West Belfast for autism. Autism awareness was starting to grow because kids were being diagnosed more and more. So we decided from the number of people that attended the Autism ANI meeting to create a wee support group for ourselves. And it was basically starting off with a cup of tea, somewhere to come for an hour every other Wednesday. Um, you could get facts or you could offload. So whatever you went through that week, you spoke to other parents that were going through the same. You could bring the kids along. So if you didn't have support, there was a um, facility to, as, as um, childcare to provide for them. And from then, we've grown. We would eventually love to have a drop-in centre. Um, our children generally can't attend summer schemes that are provided by the City Council. So there's lots of summer schemes provided, but none of our children can attend. Um, we've had parents who have been told we don't have the cover, we, could, we couldn't take somebody on the spectrum, because um, we don't have one-to-one -one cover and they would need one-to-one. -one. So what do you do with your children who are left from school? A whole period of the summer so that's something else we do we provide a summer scheme um, again we don't have any money for this so, and we don't have any premises but we did we get a couple of days out last year we took the kids to Portrush and um, we took the kids to Carnfunnock we had a day in M&Ds in Scotland with the children as well so the service is vital but children are saying or the parents are saying where, do, where can I bring my child? There's nowhere because there's just none of those places that our city council run have anything for children with autism. So we would ideally love a drop-in centre that parents need the support as well so they can go and have a cup of tea and like a sensory room or something for the children um, where they can go and they can be well cared for. So the likes of Shine, it is very important that they um, continue on with their voluntary organisation um, by putting on different activities for teenagers at the minute they are that age group, which is sort of um, is becoming a concern because there's more and more children coming through into adult years and there aren't enough services or support from the government for those kids.
pain to say 